I think we just like let it grow. Yeah. Like a seed in the soil. Throw some shit on it. Yeah, we'll poop on it a little bit. It'll uh, it'll blossom. It's, it's... Sprout and blossom. Um, Into a mighty redwood. Yeah, we should totally like mention, but not in a direct way, that we have a Patreon as well. Patreon.com slash IAPT is what our Patreon is. So people people can throw some money our way. But yeah, we'll do that at some other time. Wink, wink. <laughs> when it feels more natural. Patreon.com slash IAPT. And we can just sort of like slide it in almost subliminally. Uh huh. Yeah. No, people won't even know that they're uh, listening to us say, uh, visit us at patreon.com slash IAPT. They won't even know. They won't. They'll just be like, oh, this is cool. They'll just, it'll be a compulsion. They're like doing the dishes and then, huh, you know, those guys at It's Another Podcast could use a few dollars. I should go to their Patreon. How do I know they have a Patreon? I don't even know. It's a pa- It'll be that smooth. Yeah, patreon.com slash IAPT. It's going to be great. That feels almost disingenuous. Well, pff, fucking, you're the one talking about scamming Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't done it. Welcome to It's Another Podcast, though. I'm Mike. And I'm Joe. And here is episode four, but first, it's It's the the news. news. Those pesky kids. Goats damage a police car as officers respond to World War II mortar. Police in the United Kingdom launched a tongue-in-cheek appeal to track down the pesky ruminants. Sioux Falls, South Dakota, mourns brief life of urban corn stock. The lone stock was growing up through a crack in the concrete before someone ripped it out of the street. Swiss town coated in cocoa powder after factory glitch. It snowed particles of fine powder in Olten after the ventilation system at the Lint and Sprungli chocolate factory malfunctioned. Runaway emu on the lamb in New Jersey. An animal control officer said he didn't know the bird's age or sex, but I can tell you it needs a bath. Whoa. Rhode Island boy digs up gigantic two and a half pound mollusk. Cooper Monaco found the massive mollusk Monday. I felt the edge of it, and I thought, holy moly, this is a clam, he said. No boogers. Woman arouses the internet by accidentally buying phallic cutting board. Georgia Rogers said she couldn't believe a marble cutting board looked like a penis. And that's the news. And here's episode four. Hi. This is it. This is the show. Number four. Number Big four. number four. Big number four. Can you believe it? We made it this far. So what are we talking about this week? This week, we are talking about, which, uh, you know, it's kind of topical. Uh, we are going to be talking about the Black Death. Oh. The medieval plague. Uh, more specifically, we're going to be talking about the uh, 
outbreak that happened in between 1347 and 1353, which caused the most the most damage to most of the old world at the time. Those are some rough years. Yeah. Um, yeah, would you believe that all of that death happened because of a street fight? Uh, I guess so. <laughs> well, I mean... It seems... Uh... I mean, it's it's hard to say what actually happened at the time. There's many different, like, you know, oh, well, no, maybe it wasn't this and... You know, it wasn't all it wasn't all the the plague. And we'll get we'll get to what the plague is in a moment. Um maybe it was also I mean, it was on uh rats for a long time, right? Well yeah, I mean that's the most accepted uh the most accepted theory on, on how it spread. But we'll talk we'll talk about that here but um yeah let's just go into what the plague is um yeah it was basically so, caused it was caused by a bacterium it was known as yersinia pestis and uh yeah basically it caused three different types of plague you had bubonic, pneumonic, and septicemic. Triple threat. Yeah, and and that all depended on how it infected the body. Like bubonic was that was the most famous one. You know, you got the you know the black boils under the armpits and stuff, and that was that was the most survivable of the three. Uh, pneumonic was. No shit. Yeah, that was. Yeah, it infected it. That came through, um, yeah, infected by flea bites or whatever, um, and it infected the lymph nodes, and that's what caused the buboes, as they called them, the buboes, the bubonics. Um, but yeah, that was the most survivable of the three. I mean, it was like a 60% mortality rate as it was, you know, but it yeah. was, you, you would potentially, if you got the bubonics, you would be able to survive. Um, yeah. The next one was pneumonic. That's when it, uh, the bacteria basically reproduced in your lungs causing, you know, the cough and like, Basically, it was airborne plague at that point. Um, I mean, it got, gets named from like pneumonia, right? It gives you pneumonia. Yeah, it, it it fucks up your lungs and yeah, you're coughing and sputtering and and all that. Um, I'm not sure on the numbers on that one, but that was a little more uh, fatal than it, just because it was like it. I mean, the only thing we had going for it it was is this shit is so nasty and so like from the time of infection to the time of death was like a week you know it was so cool. fast and so fatal that it didn't have time to basically become a pandemic or or whatever i mean it did a pretty fucking good job during the time but Anyway, that, yeah, that was the mnemonic, and then the septicemic was, if you got that, you were fucked. It, that was like a 100% fatality. That was when uh, the plague infected your bloodstream. That's and, bad. Yeah, at that point, it was it was done. It was, it was all over for you, if you got that version. Yeah, if it has septic in the name, and that can't be good nope it, it was not good but yeah it, it was basically yeah all down to this bacteria that i don't know it was uh 
so I'm going to go on this timeline. I want to kind of make, break it down in, in, on this timeline. It's a pretty wonderful timeline that I found on the History Channel website, of all places. So kudos to them. You, you found the one thing on their History Channel website that has to deal with history. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> it wasn't Pawn Stars. You got the only thing. I didn't. I didn't get this timeline off of Pawn Stars. <laughs> that's for sure. You don't uh, have to call a friend who's an expert in this field to come over and, and tell us about it. Uh, I got this guy. He's like sick all the time. He knows all about the plague. <laughs> uh, let me tell you about the plague. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, we're gonna break it down these uh, these four years, which was arguably the most devastating to Europe at the time. Yeah, you know, it's said anywhere from 25 to 50 million people killed. You know, some estimates say it was like almost, you know, some parts of Europe, up to 90% of the population was killed by, by this. Um, you know, just, but I mean, you know, what, it, you know, numbers from 800 years ago, 900 years ago. Wait, is that right? No. Numbers from, you know, 750 years ago. <laughs> yeah, they didn't keep the best records then. No, uh, not at all. But, I mean, they kept some, so, you know, it's easy to to puzzle out, piece it together. But, yeah, and then, uh, you know, later we'll talk about some other theories of the time that might not have even been the plague at all so who knows it's all theories anyway so this story starts back in 1346 and uh basically it starts in mongolia of of all places and um yeah during during this time in mongolia so, yeah, this is an interesting time, uh, and, you know, looking this up, like, looking up the Mongol Empire, it's, like, something we could probably revisit. It's, it's a pretty interesting story. So, anyway, yeah, there's, yeah, it said, uh, was passed to humans by a Terabagan. What the hell is that? Uh, apparently it's a type of marmot. Is that like a weasel? Yeah, no, you know, like a marmot, dude. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay, yeah, like a, a marmot. Yeah, a marmot. They're like marmots, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, there was uh, this dude. Uh, he was, there was four Connets at the time. Um, this is Janabek. He was the Khan of the Golden Horde. Which was kind of more uh, northwest or northeast Europe edges of the uh, the Mongol Empire. You know, you, you had like Kublai Khan down in China doing his thing, and mm-hmm. then there was a couple other ones. Um, but yeah, he was he was like you know hanging out in the Black Sea area, and um, so like yeah when. One day in the city of Tana, I forget what it's called now, Um, but yeah, like, you know, in the marketplace or wherever, this brawl erupts between some Italian merchants and a group of, uh, yeah, the cons dudes, right? As happens, sure. So, yeah, the result of this brawl was like, uh, ended up like one of the one of the cons guys is killed. The Ital- oh. yeah, the Italians are oh shit. We need to get the fuck out of here. Done so, fucked up. So they all flee to uh it's a a Genoese outpost of called Kaffa. And um so they all leave to Kaffa. Janabek grabs his army and goes, Fuck this, we're gonna go after him, right? Mm-hmm. 
So they all, yeah, they get to, uh, and so Kaffa is like on the coast, right, of the Black Sea. Um, and Janabek's army uh, followed them all on land. And when they get to Kaffa, they lay siege to Kaffa. This outpost fort. I don't. I don't. It. I don't know what it was at the time. Anyway. But yeah, Pretty standard uh, like Mongolian protocol for the time. Yeah. Is yeah. Pretty much. They so yeah they lay siege siege to this place, but unknowingly to them they brought this plague with them. And Uh-oh. it's. Yeah, and it starts. Uh, it starts killing. Um, the Khan's soldiers, right? So, you know, as they're sitting there, you know, siege warfare, I got to imagine, was pretty fucking boring for both sides. You know, you're kind of camped out outside of the walls, waiting for some kind of opportunity to jump in and fuck some shit up. So, yeah, and all the while, uh, yeah, Janabek's army is like slowly succumbing to this disease. He didn't know what it is. And he's, so he's getting like, you know, all these soldiers bodies like piled up, you know, like he said, like piled up like cordwood, you know, and the just fucking stench is unimaginable. He's getting pissed off. And so he finally said, fuck it. And started loading up catapults and catapulting the corpses into the city. (laughs) Yeah. To get rid rid of these guys, your problem now. Yeah, to get rid of the fucking body problem, and also just a big old fuck you to the city. And so, yeah, they're doing that. And so, yeah, so obviously the city is getting inundated by these fucking bloated, dead bodies full of fucking disease. You can imagine what happens. You know, they're exploding everywhere, and the rats are. Everywhere, and I'm sure the uh, sanitation in the city before that happened wasn't the best. It, it nope. never was in those medieval cities. So, so yeah, they start getting infected as well. So, uh, yeah, this goes on for about a year. And uh, so, yeah, by May of 1347, like both sides are just completely fucked, right? And so since Kaffa is on the coast, people in the cities started uh, fleeing by by ship, right? Because the army was on land. So they're like, ah, we're going to get the fuck out of here. Um, so they start sailing off these, these ships just full of infected people just all over wherever they could, you know, and like, uh, so yeah, one ship ends up in Constantinople, but yeah, so they, one ship goes to Constantinople. No one knows what the fuck's up. They get there fucking done. 90% of the population of Constantinople is gone, right? Just dead of this plague. Uh, yeah. In October 1347, another ship docks in Sicily. Uh, the crew is just fucking, it's, it's a death ship, right? It's just everyone on board this ship has plague, right? Uh, again, they don't know what the fuck is going on. Uh, so people start dying in the city. So people start fucking getting the fuck out of Sicily, right? And they, they move to Messina, right? And from Messina, they moved to the mainland of Italy. And, well, it doesn't go great from there. So in November, another one of these plague ships from Kaffa uh, docks in Marseille in France. And once again, it spreads throughout the, throughout the countryside. Um, then in January of 1348, a different plague strain enters Europe through Genoa, brought by another fucking coffin ship, 
ship from Kaffa. Well, these guys really messed up. But, uh, yeah, at this point, they knew. They knew shit was happening. And so the Genoans are, like, they go out and fucking attack the ship and uh, drive it away. You know, fuck you, you can't dock here. But in the skirmish, people end up getting infected. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, now they're facing two strains of this at the same time. And then uh, from Sicily, the plague spreads to Persian Empire through Greece. Um, most of Eastern Europe down to fucking Egypt and uh, Cyprus. So they, and then <laughs> in Cyprus, they start getting infected with the plague, but they also get a fucking tsunami and er- or an earthquake and a tsunami at the same time. So yeah, pretty, pretty much 2020 vibes in Cyprus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, Venice, you know, they, uh, they get the outbreak, but they're the first to, uh, kind of organize, organize some kind of like response to this, you know? So, um, so this, this is where the etymology of quarantine comes in, right? Yes. It actually, uh, comes from the Italian phrase, quaranta giorni. Which means for uh, that's the delivery, the not delivery pizza. That's no. the one you bake at home. No, it, it means forty days. Oh, okay. But I, I guess in that time it would take about forty days for a pizza to get to your place. Forty days, or it's free. <laughs> pizza, pizza. This is where the etymology of pizza comes in, right? No, quarantine. Yeah, we're talking about quarantine. It's when they, they, yeah, this, this is where the word pizza comes from because they're like, when people got sick, they're like, get out of here, you pizza shit. <laughs> so informative. I think we all learned something today. So, yeah, we, we went way off, way off on this. Quarantine. This is going to be some editing right here, that's for sure. <laughs> But yeah, so they they you know they pioneered the first kind of disease like, response. Yeah, you know they had ship inspections and any anything anything that looked like even resembling sickness, they would burn the fuck out of those ships, right? And they, um, yeah, so you know, much like today, they shut down the bars, restricted, you know. Wine from unknown sources. Mm-hmm. Um, but even then, you know, people are just like dying left and right. And the canals start filling up with dead people. That's not good either. Yeah. So I'm sure they had like those singing gondola guys out there, you know, picking up dead people. I don't even know if they existed at the time, but maybe that's where they come from, you know? But yeah, even though they, you know, they they had quarantine, social distancing, all that shit, the plague still kills about 60% of the Venetian population. God damn. Yeah. So, yeah. Um... So by April 1348, plague is just fucking Europe shit up, right? And um, so obviously people at this time didn't know anything about bacteria or disease vectors or anything like that. So um, they needed something to blame. You want to guess what or who they blamed? Um, I mean, (laughs) not really, but I think I know the answer to this. 
Do you want to say it anyways? <laughs> I'm going to guess it was the Jews. It is. It you're exactly right. It was the Jews. Uh, yeah, April 1348 was like the first of just fucking brutal massacres of Jewish communities. And um, the first one was in Provence, um, where 40 Jews were murdered because they thought the Jews were to blame for the plague. I wonder what kind of fucked up reasoning. Not that, as we can tell from current times, people need any reason. Well, I'll, I'll, yeah, it gets it gets uh, more more into that, like in um, guess where of all places in Austria and Germany. They talk about it a little more. Oh detail. boy. Uh, okay, by June, thirteen forty eight, the plague hits England. Um, spreads through the town of Dorset. People get all fuck, fucking scared, start fleeing to the countryside, and they spread it around. Yep. Summer of 1348 was a fucking weird time. A weird, weird time. This is uh, about the time that uh, the flagellants started to appear. You know the flag- farting people, huh? The farting people. Yeah. I thought you said fl- with the G. I thought you said the flatulence. No, the yeah, the flatulence, the far- the farting zealots. They were they were big in. Yeah, I think I think the last uh, last surviving member of the. Of them was uh, James Joyce. You can read all. Oh of shit! Yeah, he wrote a bunch of letters. You can read all about it. Just, yeah, look that up on your own time. <laughs> no, the flagellants. He's uh, these guys were like they just like kind of marched around in in uh, in groups. They would sing, and fucking whip themselves. With like all kinds of like weird whips and shit until they were all like bloody and spraying blood everywhere. And don't threaten me with a good time. Couldn't have been good for uh, for the old plague spread, you know, whipping yeah, a open bunch of wounds out. Yeah. biological matter all over the place. Um, but yeah, they they got popular. They were uh, they were known. In all parts of Europe at the time, bringing their uh, blood and whips and anti-Semitism. Uh, yeah, same summer. Plagues all over France at this point. Uh, then it said that the strain split again. So there's one strain moving north. And the other one moving east. And France is kind of fucked. 50% of the population is dead. So this is like like a game of Plague Incorporated on super easy. Yeah, yeah. No one it's that was totally it, you know. It was like no one washes their hands. Doctors don't research anything. Yeah, it was people just straight up spitting into each other's mouths. Well, I mean, bacteria was easy mode in that game. You know, you can make that shit do all kinds of stuff. So yeah, that was yeah, that was the first uh, first run of Plague Inc. <laughs> well, the first win, but I, I guess it wasn't even a win because it never got to fucking Madagascar <laughs> or Greenland or, or Greenland. Or did it? I don't know. Uh, maybe it it did end up it didn't end up in Scandinavia. Um, so yeah, from there it moves to Austria, Switzerland, and, um, they, they really, really blamed it on the Jews. So it's just like their only answer to it, right? 
yeah, uh, well, you know, it was like all the, uh, they thought that the Jews were poisoning the wells because of the way the, uh, the disease spread along the river, I guess. So, yeah, all along the Rhine is like, all these towns are just completely fucking killing all these Jewish communities. And, um, well, King Casimir the Third of Poland, he offered safe haven to anybody. And so it was just, there was this huge uh, migration of these Jewish communities going to Poland and, and Lithuania. Um, it's nice of him. Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, and then you see, like, these are where these communities landed and that kind of well in their time the future affected the future but also like just gives you a glimpse of how history made people the way they are maybe that long just ingrained hatred of Jewish people in Germany I don't know that's speculation but anyways so yeah, they they get a safe haven in in Poland and Lithuania, and and the uh, yeah, I don't know, pogroms and all that stuff kind of stopped. So this is when the the Black Death kind of ran itself out. Uh, this is no, this is still when it was kind of full steam ahead. You know. Um, okay. Shit. Yeah, uh, October of 1348, uh, King Edward III's daughter, uh, she gets the plague and dies. He blames the plague on garbage and just human shit piled up in London streets and in the river, which I mean... Probably had a point. I mean, it was a great guess for for the time, you know? I don't know if like there was much done to clean up the streets at the time, but... Yeah, back in Germany, uh, February 1349, big old massacre of Jewish people in Strasbourg. People do some... 2,000 two Jews things. burned alive in Strasbourg on Valentine's Day. Yeah. And uh, in Mates, they had... 3,000 Jews were defending themselves against Christians, but they finally were overcome and slaughtered. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, April 1349, plague gets to Wales. Basically by people bringing it with them from London kills about a hundred thousand there. Uh, July around yeah, July thirteen forty nine. An English ship uh, brings the plague to Norway, and so this is where basically the plague gets to most of Sc- Scandinavia gets to. Denmark and Sweden. And uh, this is a funny story, though. Um, uh, The king of Sweden decides that fasting on a Friday and not wearing shoes on Sunday will please God and end the plague. Which totally worked. Um, No, no, it didn't work at all. Oh. Yeah, kills two of his brothers, and then moves on into Russia, and also gets to Greenland. <laughs> it's oh, a shit. It's one of them uh, plague ink victories right there. If you can get yeah. Greenland, yeah, you're good. Yeah, and uh, basically that kind of halts all of the Vikings' exploration of the New World. That was going, you know, they were jumping across from Iceland to Greenland to, and they were, you know, they were in 
fucking Nova Scotia and shit at the time. But the plague puts a stop to all of that. That's crazy. I wonder what would have happened if if the plague hadn't hit them and they were able to to keep, you know, colonizing up in Canada. I mean, yeah, who knows? I mean, they did have a, an established colony there for a while. But, you know, I'm not sure on the dates, like when it was, but, you know, it was way before Columbus, even in, you know, the mid 14th century. That's still 100 years before Columbus, 150 years before Columbus. Yeah. But, yeah, it's that would have been stuff, man. It's like. Dude, what if the Nazis won World War II? <laughs> there have been a lot of uh, <laughs> thought experiment. You ever notice that like uh, people don't ever do any like other alternative history than other other than well, what if the Nazis won World War II? <laughs> that's the big it's, one. It's always that one, you know. It's never like. Well, what if mammals died out instead of dinosaurs? That would be yeah. a completely different looking planet. Well, let me tell you. I think it'd be exactly the same. Just we'd we'd be scaly uh, podcasters right now. It would just be that show, Dinosaurs, that was on in the nineties. Did you ever watch that? No, I mean, I remember hearing about it. You know, I've seen stills, probably a couple of videos. I never watched it, though. But you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, they're kind of like puppet suits. Yeah. And there was the baby one. But the only thing is, like, it wasn't, like, modern day. Like, they were dinosaurs in modern day. They were actually back. When dinosaurs were roaming the earth times, but they were, they had like TV and shit. So it was kind of like the Flintstones. Just a big old pile of anachronistic yeah. bullshit. So yeah, that's, that's the fucking Vikings all fucked up. Uh, March of 1350. This is a funny story. Well, funny. Not. Ha ha funny, but it definitely draws some some parallels to to what we're going through now. So uh yeah, March thirteen fifty in Scotland. So far they've avoided the plague, right? They're like, ha, ah, look look at England. Fucking fuckers, they're all sick and dying and shit. Maybe what a it, bunch of idiots. Yeah, what a bunch of idiots. Maybe it's time uh, we invaded. <laughs> so they're all they're all waiting along, you know, the border, like Hadrian's Wall or some shit, you know. They're they're all waiting for everyone to get together. Some dumb fuck gets infected. And then five thousand of this invasion army's troops end up dying, right? Whoops a daisy. So they're like, oh shit, retreat. And so they all go back to wherever bring they're from and home. bring the fucking plague with them. Good job, Scotland. Uh, so yeah. Yep. Round uh doesn't really say when in thirteen fifty one but in 1351, the plague really starts uh, petering out because, you know, people learned from the Italians that quarantine works. So they start quarantining people. Yeah, but uh, the aftermath is 
somewhere between 25 to 50 million people dead. Basically about half of the population of Europe at the time. Well, anyway, so yeah, that was the Black Death run its course. But, uh, I mean, it wasn't all bad news. I mean... We got, um... What's well, that nursery... Right, or like the, you know... Ring around the... Ring around the rosy? The, yeah. That was about the Black Death. Yeah. But, uh, by 1353... You know, it's pretty much behind them. Uh... You know, there, there's so many, like, so much death that happens. And the survivors, like, leaving, going somewhere else. You know, um, basically, they were able to get a job easier for better wages because, well, I mean, the labor pool was so decimated, you know? Yeah. So, like, for the first time in a long time that standard of living gets better for fucking peasants during this time, you know, and leads to leads to better shit for them. But of course, you know, like the aristocracy doesn't want the peasants having too good a life because of course they don't. No. So they pass a bunch of laws to keep them down because of course they do. And they end up, you know, there's some revolts. Social social change revolts in England and France at the time and um basically, you know, a lot of the old fucking a lot of the church wasn't as uh, powerful after this. And it led to, uh, like, the Renaissance, you know? For, you know, people looking for new ideas and science and art and whatnot and, and religion, you know? So it wasn't all bad. I mean, it did bring out some good things, but mostly it just killed a bunch of fucking people. And it, yeah, yeah, it it wasn't the first time and it wouldn't be the last time, you know, it comes back periodically again and again, but not as bad as this, this period of time. So yeah, there were, uh, other theories about what happened during this time and why so many people died, uh, especially in like the uh, colder regions because uh, the plague doesn't like it likes warmer hotter regions Mediterranean regions it doesn't like the the cold and the snow Hmm. Um, and yeah so like rats were largely to blame just because everything was dirty and fucked up and rats carried the fleas that had the bacteria and then the fleas would bite the people. And yeah, that's how it happened. But there's a theory that like a meteor or a comet hit the earth. Like a pretty, not a huge one, but a significant one at the time. That uh, basically kicked up a bunch of shit like... Uh, ammonia and carbon dioxide into the air and you know Mm. at the time like there was a lot of crop failures so um they were thinking like along with the the plague you know people are are starving and they're already immunocompromised and who knows what else you know they could have been dying from at the time um all due to like all this all this shit kicked up in the air from a comet or a meteor. So saying that the stage had been set for this sort of 
uh, the, the plague to have a a real easy time killing people, right? Yeah. Um, they're, well, they're also saying it might not have been the plague at all. It might have been, uh, you know, like some other bacteria that was more resistant to the cold, like anthrax or something. Uh, it could have just been people starving, malnutrition, uh, you know, elevated levels of carbon dioxide in the air, just poison air in some places just because of, of this extraterrestrial event. Hmm. Um, but who knows? You know, I, I'm going to stick with what it was because yeah, I could totally see it being spread from rats to humans marmots to humans because yeah I was like because like it would in the fleas that carried it, it came from well the black rat first which is like central asian rat to like the uh, the brown rats that are in Europe more commonly and Kind of, they kind of jumped over to them, but uh, the way it worked in a flea, it was like the flea would become so full of this bacteria that they just they'd be starving, right? They just need blood, and so uh. they would jump from rats to humans looking for blood. But every time they would, you know, bite something like the bacteria would prevent it from taking in blood. And so it would just bite more and more and more. So sure. it would be like depositing bacteria more and more. And it wouldn't. Yeah. It was just, it was fucked for all kinds of organisms. Really? Yeah.